Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ahabitu fillah as we mentioned that the beautiful statement of Imam Muhammad Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala in which he mentioned he said I'lam rahimakullah annahu yajibu alayna ta'allam arba masail al-ula al-ilm he said verily it's an obligation upon us to know uh, four things. He said, Al-Ula Al-Ilm. The first thing that we need is, is Islamic knowledge. This is Al-Ilm. This is one of the things that we need. MashaAllah, this is called Source Lake. It's a new, I've never been here before. But it makes the hike so much shorter. I don't know if I want to do this or not. So anyhow, he says, It's not much of a lake. Al-Ula Al-Ilm. He said, the first thing is knowledge. And then he mentions, he defines what knowledge is. He said it's knowing Allah. And it's knowing his, his prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And knowing the religion of Islam with its textual proofs. And this, Ahab Tifillah, is, as we mentioned, the usul of the deen. The deen returns back to that th uh, three usul. And then he says, he defines what knowledge is. Uh, he defined knowledge, you know, that is knowledge of Allah, knowledge of his Prophet Sallallahu and knowledge of the religion of Islam with its textual proofs. And then he mentions, Wathani, The second thing he mentions is practicing that knowledge. And this is where most, many of us have problems. Is we gain some knowledge of the book and the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, But we fail in our practice. And some totally fail. Some have different levels of failure. You know, it has to do, depends on your iman your faith, what sins you're doing, what you involve yourself in. Or maybe you fell into a mistake. It's not your habit, but, you know, the shaitan overcame, overtook you, or your waswas. And then he mentions the third thing. A da'wah to ilay. So he mentions the third obligatory duty upon every Muslim is that one should call to the knowledge that they've attained and practiced and they're practicing. So, they, you know, giving da'wah. So not to be in a hurry to give da'wah, of course, without knowledge and without practice because then, then that knowledge will be a hujjah alayk. You know, it'll be a, a proof against you. And that's what we, we, we should be fearful of. Then he mentioned the fourth thing. He said, uh, he mentioned the third thing, sorry. A sabr ala adafi. So he mentioned that the third thing is being patient. Uh, is a thani al amalubi, a thalith, a thalith, a da'wah to ilay, a rabi, a sabr ala adafi. So the fourth thing, sorry, is a sabr ala adafi. So first it's gaining knowledge. And then it's practicing. Then third, it's calling to it. You know, inviting to that knowledge. And fourth, it's being patient upon that whole process and the harm that comes with giving da'wah. Because when you give da'wah to Allah, that's the highest thing you could be doing. When you're giving da'wah to Allah, for sure you're going to have many enemies. 
For sure, people want to see you fail. For sure, there are people who want to destroy your honor, destroy your family, destroy your persons. There's jealousy, envy, hatred. Everything that the shaitan can drum up to oppose you, it will be there. So this is why it's important to seek refuge in Allah and be upon ikhlas wa sunnah and elm wa basira in order to protect yourself. And, and all of those things are a cycle of protection because the more knowledge you have and the more that you practice that knowledge and give da'wah, remind, and are patient because of your practice and your sincerity, then bi'idnillah, you'll have success. And you'll have the protection of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Wa sallam.